Yo, what is up guys? Welcome back to another Asphalt 9 video. Today we have an interesting one because we are looking at the JAG XJR9. Now it's interesting because the last video I made was on the complete opposite to this car, the Vanda Electrics Dendrobium, which we'll talk about why I think of that in a minute. But this is the most recent top A-class car added to Asphalt 9 within the last update. And this video is going over a series of races in the current XJR9 multiplayer with a bunch of other cars that you'll see throughout this video in the different races. And long story short, I completely obliterate every single one of them because the top speed on this car, okay guys, get ready, is 268 miles per hour. And no, this is not an S-Class car. You are correct in looking when you're in the garage, it is in fact in A-Class. Now we've had top speed focused cars in A-Class before. Of course we have the Onyx, the 570S, and the Citroen GT. But I believe the highest top speed we have is the Citroen GT, which can go around 250 miles per hour. This is about 20 miles per hour faster. And again, this is not an S class, this is an A class. Now, of course, there is a downside. However, this car has not only the amazing top speed, but it has pretty decent handling and it has really, really good nitro efficiency. So the only real downside to this car is its horrendous acceleration. However, does that really matter? Well, honestly, because all of the other stats are just so good, I really think it's not that big of a deal. I don't think it truly balances this car out. Now, again, this is a bit of a caveat. This car is being played in its exclusive multiplayer series where we're not going up against all of the other A-class cars. However, the SC18 is in this class or in this multiplayer series, and that's a really decent A-class car, not a king or anything like that. And of course, we have the 911 GT3, which is going to be a very nice car for those twistier tracks. And what I found was that no matter what track I was on, even those really twisty tracks, just because of how nuts this car's top speed is compared to the other cars, I absolutely destroyed all of them as soon as I got up to my top speed. So this car is extremely momentum based. You have to be really precise with your airspeed tricks, nitro management, and racing lines because it does lose its top speed pretty quickly and it's hard to get back up to it because of its acceleration. And of course, at the beginning of every race you play, you will start in last place pretty much no matter what. I believe the only other car that has this bad of acceleration is the GT by Citroen, but I'm pretty sure it's actually a bit better than this car. So you're starting in last and in multiplayer, honestly, that's not that big of a deal if you know how to race correctly because one of the worst parts about classic multiplayer is going into that chaos getting knocked down however if you start so far back that you're no longer a part of that chaos you can avoid being knocked down and then use your insane nitro efficiency and top speed to just blow past everyone hopefully you won't get knocked down but then bam you're in first place now unfortunately i can't test this in classic i believe this season is only ghost However, you can see, again, at the beginning of every single race, I start in last place. But by the time the race turns around to maybe the midpoint or so, I just fly by everyone. It's really funny. So this car is nuts. And it's the complete opposite of the other car we looked at, which was the Vanda, because the Vanda has insane acceleration, handling, and nitro, but terrible top speed. And of course, this car's main benefit is the top speed. Now, the other thing though, is that this car does have really good nitro efficiency. And that's one of the big benefits about this car because I think it's underrated in the sense that yes, you have terrible acceleration, but you're always in shockwave it feels like. It just lasts so long. So getting up to your top speed doesn't feel like that big of a nuisance. You do sometimes reach 240 miles per hour when your nitro runs out, 
but again that is well into the top speed oriented cars of a class anyway so even on those shorter tracks with shorter straightaways where it's going to be hard to get up to 268 miles per hour with your top speed even if you have those shorter stretches of road you're still getting into the 230s 240s 250s pretty darn easily and because of that nuts handling as well you stay at those top speeds if you can do things like floaty drifts i do a lot of those throughout this video sometimes i fail i'm still practicing you know we can all get better at that but those floaty drifts really help out a lot doing the punch nitro trick as well that helps and like i said momentum is extremely important so if you take advantage of those little tricks little airspeed tricks here and there you can stay at 268 miles per hour for a really long time and honestly, I think we are going to see these cars demolish everything else in multiplayer, not only in Ghost Slipstream, of course, but also I believe in Classic, this is going to do really, really well because of its ability to stay in Shockwave. You're gonna be immune to those Vandas that are always seemingly in Shockwave as well. Not quite as good as the Vandas Nitro efficiency, but I still believe it's gonna be good enough to where you can blow past them in Shockwave without being knocked down and anything like that. So yeah, this was definitely one of the most fun cars in A-Class to drive. I had some mistakes because I just wasn't expecting how fast this car was gonna go. And you do have to be careful. While the handling is really good for its top speed and in general compared to the other A-Class cars, it is a bit wide. And at that speed, you're expecting S-Class handling, but you don't really have that. So sometimes you get the speed of an S-Class handling, but you don't have the sharp cornering ability. So just keep in mind when you're playing with this car, especially when you do the floaty drifts, you are going to go really, really wide with this car. So just keep that in mind. So in summary, this car is definitely the king of all top speed oriented tracks. And I think it will do really good on most generic tracks that mix both cornering and top speed. It'll do pretty decently on there as well. And it will hold its own on twistier tracks. I wouldn't expect instant victories over Vandas on the Caribbean, but it's still going to be very competitive because of its ability to keep Shockwave for so long and its pretty decent handling as well. The only problem is the nuts special event going on for this car. And with the key packs, it's going to be very difficult to unlock. I've spent a couple hundred tokens doing the single key packs but I think I'm gonna stop there. I really don't wanna push my luck on this because it's not a guaranteed car. And especially because of this terrible acceleration, I don't see this car being very useful unless you're at an extremely high star count or just at max. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on the XJR in the comment section down below. Be sure to join my Discord server and follow me on Instagram. I will see you guys later.